welcome to this introduction to Pythagorean triads, or as they are sometimes known, Pythagorean triples. If you've studied the theorem of Pythagoras, you will know that for a right angle triangle, such as the one shown on the screen, whose side lengths are A, B and C, the relationship between the three sides is that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And that is true for all right angle triangles. And here's an example. If we have the three sides, three, four, and five, then we have the relationship three squared plus four squared equals five squared. We can write those three side lengths, three, four, and five, as a Pythagorean triad or triple by writing it as three, four, five, as shown in brackets. We write the three sides in ascending order. Here's another example. We have the three sides 20, 21 and 29. They also satisfy Pythagoras' theorem. 20 squared plus 21 squared equals 29 squared. And we can write that as 20, 21 and 29 as a Pythagorean triad. What is useful is that if we multiply or divide a triad by any whole number, we produce another triad. In other words, we produce another three sides which satisfy Pythagoras' formula. Let's see how this works. Let's suppose our triad is A, B and C. We're going to multiply it by some whole number. Let's call it K. So the three sides become KA, KB and KC. We can now show that those three sides also satisfy the theorem of Pythagoras. First of all, we can show on the left hand side, KA all squared plus KB all squared becomes, as you can see, K squared A squared plus K squared B squared. Taking out a common factor of K squared, we have K squared bracket A squared plus B squared, but remember that we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That comes from the original triad ABC. So we can replace a squared plus b squared by c squared. And we have k squared c squared. And that of course can be written as kc all squared, which is the third part of our triple. Let's look at some examples. Here's our original triangle, the three sides, three, four and five. We know it satisfies Pythagoras' theorem. If we multiply the triad by two, each side becomes six, eight, and 10. And it's easy to check that six squared plus eight squared equals 10 squared. Let's try this triad, 10, 24, 26. It also satisfies Pythagoras' theorem. Let's suppose we divide each side by two. So the three sides become 5, 12, and 13. They also satisfy Pythagoras' theorem. 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. Producing triads by multiplying or dividing doesn't guarantee that we find all of them. Another useful method is the following. Let's suppose we have our right angle triangle. Side A, we will replace by the expression x squared minus y squared. Side B by 2xy and side c by x squared plus y squared where x and y will be whole numbers with x larger than y. If we are going to obtain a triad out of this relationship we must have that the three sides satisfy Pythagoras' theorem. In other words that a squared plus b squared is still equal to c squared. Let's see if we can show this. We have a equals x squared minus y squared. If we square everything, we have a squared equals bracket x squared minus y squared all squared. And then expanding and simplifying the brackets, we obtain what's shown on the right hand side. We have b equals 2xy. So from that, we can obtain b squared equals 4x squared y squared. We have c equals x squared plus y squared. And squaring all that, we end up with what is shown on the right hand side. Now joining together the terms a squared plus b squared, and I've put brackets around each one, 
around a squared and b squared that simplifies to what's shown there x to the power of 4 plus 2x squared y squared plus y to the power of 4 and if you look up at the top of the screen you'll notice that that right hand side is exactly the same as what we obtained for c squared so we've shown that a squared plus b squared equals c squared when we replace the values for a b and c with expressions involving whole numbers x and y now that sounds complicated, but it isn't. Let's see how we can use that to produce our own triads. Let's suppose we use x equals 3 and y equals 2. Remember, the value for x must be greater than the value for y. We substitute those two values in the three expressions we have. So the value for a becomes 5, the value for b becomes 12, and the value for c becomes 13. So our triad is 5, 12, 13. Another interesting way of producing triads involving decimal numbers is to use a bit of trigonometry. Let's look at a circle as shown with a point P on the circle. We connect the origin to point P and also a vertical line so that basically we have constructed a right angle triangle. Theta is the angle as shown inside the triangle. We'll label the long side of the triangle, the hypotenuse, SC, just as we've done previously with Pythagoras' formula. The side adjacent to the angle, where we normally write side A, we will write it in terms of C as C cos theta. Cos theta is the trigonometric function cosine. Similarly, we can write side B as B equals C sine theta where sine theta is another trigonometric function involving angle theta. Now, let's see if this setup also satisfies Pythagoras' formula. We have a squared equals c squared cos squared theta. We have b squared equals c squared sine squared theta. So, joining them together, we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared cos squared theta plus c squared sine squared theta. We can take out a common factor of c squared as shown. Now, if we want Pythagoras' formula to be satisfied, we must have that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The only way that can happen is if we have cos squared theta plus sine squared theta to equal 1. And we can show that this is always true. Let's try an angle of 30 degrees. Then we have cos squared 30 degrees plus sine squared 30 degrees. And if you work that out with a calculator, you will obtain cos of 30 is about 0 0.8660 and sine of 30 is 0.5. Squaring and adding each, we obtain, as shown, a value of 1. In fact, the expression cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1 is what is known as an identity in trigonometry. It's true for all values of the angle theta. So we can write our three sides in terms of a triad. A will be C cos theta, B will be C sine theta, and of course side C remains as C. And an example of that, let's suppose we make side C to equal 2. And let's choose an angle of 20 degrees. Then A will be C cos theta, which becomes 2 times cos of 20 which is about 1.879. B will be C sine theta, which is 2 times sine of 20, which is about 0.68. And our triad then becomes as shown. Of course, you need a calculator to work out the tree values for sine 20 and cos of 20. And to show that it satisfies Pythagoras' formula, we can work out that A squared plus B squared is equal to, in this case, C squared, which is 2 squared, which equals 4. And there it is.